importance of storytelling is part and parcel of all brands. Now, our guest co-host for today is, as you heard a little earlier on, uh, one of the best speakers out there, <laughs> trained in TV broadcasting and, of course, presenting, interviewed massive names and celebrities, Zac Efron, Gigi Hadid, Nicholas Cage. I could go on, I will go on. She's also an educator, an author, a certified life. Is there is there nothing that this lady does not do? It's a warm welcome to the sofa to Shireen Matwali. Thank you, Tom. It's nice to see you on this couch versus, of course, we've been working together and you're usually up on stage. Um, someone that I very much admire in the industry. Get I really do, I'm honestly. Like I love, one thing that I really love about you, honestly, as a fellow speaker, is just your consistency. <laughs> honestly, you are so good up on stage. Please continue to do it. Well, that's very kind of you. Please, uh, and please let it be known that Shereen can come back. <laughs> We've got that on yeah. camera. <laughs> right, okay. Nimi and I are just going to leave. <laughs> right, you guys, uh, leave, yeah. Leave we'll just through. carry on, shall we? Uh, let, one thing I want to ask you about, though, and it's interesting that you taught there, and we taught there about all your skills, and, you know, you wear different... Uh, uh, caps etc but it seems to and, and on, the, on the subject of brand that we are focusing on today it seems to me one thing that seems to link them all is one word storytelling is Absolutely. that still at the heart of it all it's so relevant and even more so now like a lot of our clients that we were working with they're going back to the basics of storytelling and telling their story because there is nothing like communicating how they were founded, what problem are they solving, and how they're connecting to their clientele through their story. Story is what makes it link, right? And I think we can all relate to as well. We've all probably come out listening, hearing a story and we're now elevating our love for this brand right because of that and they're all going down back to basics of storytelling mm -hmm. so i'd love to tell you guys i mean this is probably one of my favorite topics so i do education yeah. on public speaking and presenting how to be an effective speaker before we do that we need to know the art yeah. of storytelling because that's what it's all about okay we can do the intro the body of any presentation is the story whether it's in the corporate workplace or whether it's on the lifestyle element is the story and then we end with the takeaways the outro so when i'm educating about storytelling which is again it's one of my favorite topics i always try to educate the five c's of storytelling i'm not sure if you guys have heard about it mm -hmm. every you know kind of storyteller or script writer this is what this is not something that i have um by the way invented this is something that i've been taught over the years so there's a five c's the first c is character every story has to have a character that you can relate to. You're the character of your story. And I always kind of went back and one of the examples that I always like to use because we all know it, let's just say is the Titanic story, right? You know, if you look at the Titanic story, who are the characters? You've got Jack and Rose, you have the fiance, you have the mum. Straight away, you need to start to form who are your characters in your story. And from a business element, from a brand aspect, who are the characters? It will be, the, let's just say the company and it will be the client, right? The next C is conflict. There is no great story without conflict. Mm. We, this is the hook. This is the drama. Mm. And we all love drama, right? <laughs> if you look at every Turkish series or every movie, there always has to be that conflict, the problem, the drama. Same as any company, They're, they are solving a problem. So there has to be that conflict that they basically put out there in their story. So that's your second is the conflict. And boy, do we love it. Okay, that's two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three is the cure. The cure is the solution, right? What happens to overcome the conflict? From a business stance, we look at what is their solution? What are they bringing to the table to overcome that crisis, right? And every brand has that solution. That's why they have been formed. So you've got your cure. And if you look at, and I can tell you this, and I love educating people on this, when you start to break down the five C's, you won't be able to watch movies and TV series the same way again. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm like, uh-huh, that's the conflict that they're bringing on. Oh yeah, now that's the cure and that's the solution. So then after that comes, after you bring in the cure, you bring in the change. So what is the change? So if you ever see the before and the after, the before is usually the conflict, there's always a problem. And then the after is what happened after the cure and then it resulted in the change. So this is where a really great storyteller needs to walk through all these elements. The last piece, the last five of the C's is the carry out message. I refer to this as the takeaway message. What do we take away from this story? 
right? Mm -hmm. And this is very easily explained. And usually when I, when I kind of educate this in my courses, we go through in a lot sure. of extent, yeah. but this is just a, your overview. Overview, overview of the five C's of storytelling. There, there is, it's a lot to unpack there because for a brand that is brand new, especially if you are the face of your brand, which I feel like are now, are now termed creator founders, right? They're mm -hmm. the ones fronting it. How, how do they then translate that in a, in a way that people understand it without getting it too complicated? Very well? easily, mm. very easily. If, if I was the face of my brand, for example, I am the character. Who, is my, who, is, who else are the characters of my story? It is, let's just say, my end user, my client, mm -hmm. right? The conflict is if I was, let's just say, selling my book, mm -hmm. I have my book coming out, it's about public speaking and presenting, the conflict is, is that three out of four people are fearful of even starting to public speak, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So that is the conflict that I'm gonna try to help them solve. You have so many people not putting themselves out there because they're afraid yeah. and they don't know how to start. They don't know how to format. So my, my book, I would hope, is mm -hmm. going to be the solution right is the cure mm -hmm. but what, so, i'm jumping in uh, shrink because i'm conscious of time and i want to get more Tell out me. of you but why aren't people putting themselves out there like we were talking before it's the fear of rejection yeah. right constantly so yeah. how, how are we going to get over that great question i love that you asked that question and this is the number one question that gets asked for, for a lot of my students is they i'm worried there's two things there's a lot of eyes mm -hmm. i'm worried i want to sound smart i'm worried what are, how people are going to perceive me First of all, it's not about you, mm -hmm. which is actually the title of my book. It's not about you. Who is it about? Mm -hmm. Who is it about? Your it's about the yeah, our audience, mm -hmm. the people that we're speaking to. It's not about me for that period of time that we're on stage, right? Yeah. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. It's about our audience. So when we focus the shift on our audiences, how should I be speaking to them so they can actually understand? What is my demographic? Are they university students? Are they stakeholders? Are they executives? So I need to speak in the right language mm -hmm. to them. I need to make it inspiring. I need to make it educational. I need to teach them something new, mm -hmm. not something that they already know about. I need to entertain them at the same time. So first step is forget that it's about you. Mm. It's not about you for that period. Yeah. It's about your audience. And second thing, it's something that I actually had to educate my daughter on the other day. It's, oh wow, it's one of my mentors taught me this literally in the first year when I was professionally public speaking. And it was this whole, oh, I wonder what the people are gonna think. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, let me just stop you right here. And he taught me the rule of thirds. <gasps> and boy, was it a game changer. Mm -hmm. This is something that I advise everybody to educate their children on and to everybody. So there's a rule of thirds. Your first third of people are gonna love you. Yeah. They're your click. Are we running out of time? We are, we are, oh. we are more than out of time. In, in, in a word, uh, when it comes to rejection? You've got to understand that you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Love it, love it. We will right? have more from you. You're not going anywhere, you're staying Done. with us. Okay. <laughs> we, we will be catching up a little bit later. Right, but coming up, we will be gaining some insight into conducting and succeeding in high stakes negotiations by a certified professional negotiator. Plus, we're talking sales, the psychology behind business and so much more. Stay right there.